Hi guys, Ross here from Biker Talk. The Honda CB series from the late 60s and early 70s is a great platform for customization. So when a beautiful little Honda 350 popped up on my Instagram feed, I knew I had to get in contact with the owner, Christy, to have a chat. She got back in touch all the way from San Diego. So Christy, thanks for joining me here on Biker Talk. So tell me, how long have you been riding? Um, I've been riding on and off for about 10 years now. My parents were motorcycle riders. First bought my first motorcycle back in 2010. It was a Yamaha, a 68 Yamaha YCS1. And I rode that around for forever, I feel like. Um, until recently, I actually sold it to get money for this guy. <laughs> so yeah, um, I bought this motorcycle for, I guess, $600 in 2012 and it was a project bike for forever. I'm actually I commute mainly. Um, I don't get on the highway but there's a lot of really cool um, roads around here that you can cruise around on. Um, but I li also like riding at night when there's nobody else on the road. So <laughs> I'm like a little rogue rider. I'm from Colorado. So I, I really liked riding downtown at night when nobody was out. Here there's this road called Pershing and it's like super windy. Um, and then I like taking that um, pretty much side roads, back roads, all the way to the beach. And I'll ride along the beach or I'll ride to Sunset Cliffs and then I'll just hang out, watch the sunset and then ride back home. So yeah, that's my current favorite ride to do. <laughs> from uh, Astoria, Oregon to San Francisco. That would be choice. <laughs> yeah, because you go through the Redwood Forest and you, you're you along the, the coast the entire time, like, and it's super green and lush, and like there's a lot of people on motorcycles on that route, and it's just beautiful. There's like views all, all down Oregon. So yeah, I would definitely do that on a motorcycle for sure. I know the frame is like a 67, like the, and then the engine, I think it's like a 69. I don't know, it's just all kinds of different parts. So I, I was like, I'm gonna make this into a cafe racer. And this is what I'm gonna do. And like, I dragged it around with me for about uh, like seven or eight years, just in parts. Like I took it apart and, you know, put it back together and like tinkered with it for years. I originally wanted to do everything by myself so I could learn the bike in and out. But um, I, I tattoo full time. And when I'm not tattooing, I'm making jewelry. So I kind of ran out of time. Like the project went to the wayside. A lot of the reason why I was wanting to get a Honda also was if <laughs> the parts are still readily available, I guess, you can find what you need if you break it. So I was like, oh, I can, <laughs> I can get a Honda and I could break everything on it, but I could find the parts easily. That's one of the reasons. But yeah, also because they're like super customizable. And I didn't feel bad about, you know, this this bike wasn't stock when I got it. Whereas the Yamaha, the YCS one was stock and had all its original parts. And I didn't want to tear that into a cafe racer because it was just such a rare bike in general. I used to call it adult Legos. <laughs> I've always been technically inclined, like just building stuff, even with my cars, like um, I would, you know, fuel pump would go bad and, you know, I would sit down and read about it and then do it myself rather than like taking it to a mechanic. And so that's the old vintage bikes and the simplicity of the bikes. I really wanted to get into it and like learn everything and start, you know, build my own thing. When I first, started to take the project super serious. I got everything together and I, you know, um, read up as much as I could, got the manuals, everything. And I was I stripped down the tanks and I had two tanks actually. Um, I, the tank on this was a little beat up. Um, and then I got a second tank and I ended up not going to the second tank because it was a little bit different. I think it was like a, um, like a, 1972 Honda tank for CB, I think 450, so it was a little bit bigger. Um, but I, I didn't know exactly what I was doing. I just wanted, <laughs> yeah, this vision. Um, but the the day that I 
started taking everything apart and um, you know, stripping everything down, sanding everything down, and I had the bike all laid in the in out in the backyard in parts. Um, that night, I got news that my brother was killed, and I obviously didn't work on the bike for several months after that. Um, you know, I was focusing on my brother and my family, and I went out to see my family. Then, after you know, I gathered myself, and life was kind of coming back to somewhat normal, it'll never be normal, but um, I would try and sit down with the motorcycle and work on it and it would trigger me every single time. Um, it would bring me back to the day my brother died. So for years I sat on it and just wanted to kind of work on it, but I just had to come to terms with the trigger. And that's when I started looking into motorcycle builders around San Diego in the LA area. And I stumbled across Alchemy here in San Diego and I saw their builds, they were super nice. So I met up with the owner and we started discussing designs and stuff. But yeah, he was open to it. He was pretty excited about it. And I handed over the bike to him. So yeah. I am a tattoo artist, so like I like when people come to me and they have an idea, but they are like, just go to town, do whatever you want with it. So I like, <laughs> when I took the motorcycle to them, I was like, oh, I want something like, either you can do something really like girly or like Mad Max. Like the more I talked about it, I was like, oh, you know, I don't care. But then I'd be like, oh, it'd be cool if you did this. There's a side of me that likes just the like super candy stuff. Like the bottom half of the bike's all, you know, matte black and the tires are black and all that stuff. And then, and then the top's candy. And uh, it's funny because um, somebody came to me and they're like, oh yeah, if you go with Mitchell, he'll want to chrome your whole bike. And I remember being like, don't put any chrome on it. <laughs> you know, went half and half with my idea and it came out pretty rad. <laughs> I loved it. It was like, this is my dream bike. You know, I've been dreaming. I had ever since I, you know, got the motorcycle and before that, like I've been wanting to have pretty much this cafe racer. This is like my dream bike, you know, so stoked. And I have to, it's a 350. So it's really, when I first got on it, I was just like, awesome. And like peeled out. I didn't skid out or anything, but it felt like it. I was like, oh, I gotta, you know, like, take it down a notch. It's easy though, it's easy to just like, you know, wanna get crazy on this motorcycle because it's so light and stuff. So I had to like, I was excited, but I had to like tone it down. It's all about me time, you know, it's my personal time. I can be in my helmet and like just cruise and not have to think about anything but what's going on around me. So yeah, that's what I like about it a lot. You put your helmet on and you can be like, I can't hear you, I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> and then yeah, you can just be in your mind and you know, ride and like just kind of, it's meditative I feel like. I definitely like it. If you enjoyed Christy's story, please leave a like and subscribe. And remember, you can't buy happiness, but you can ride a motorcycle and that's kind of the same thing.